Look who's back. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. It's time to get back on the holy goat. And what are we going to be doing to this? Well, quite a bit, actually. Because my plan is to drive this car well over 3,000 miles, probably closer to 4,000 miles, on a grand adventure through the southwest to the duct tape drags of Tucson, Arizona, September 29th and 30th, 2023. But I want to add some creature comforts to this thing, which is to say, like, windows. You know, I would like to change out the tires on this thing. These are tires I got out of the junkyard when I built the car the first time. Maybe we can upgrade that. I'd like to go through the front end. It still has the original bushings and ball joints in the front end. I want to at least take a look at it and make sure it's safe. I picked up this dual plate intake from the guys at 323 Fabrication on YouTube. Just check them out. I got that last year at the No Name Nationals. Then Mike, a subscriber, sent me this Street Warrior carburetor. It's a vacuum secondary carb. I think that's going to give us a little better mileage over the double pumper we have on it right now. So I definitely want to swap that on and maybe we do that right now. Ever convenient homemade hood pins. Ah, yep. Nothing much has changed under here. I put a better air cleaner on it. That intake is a Holly Street Dominator and it's basically a giant hole in which fuel gets dumped into. Great for wide open performance and it actually runs remarkably well on this thing but that dual plane is going to be a lot better. Now one of the rules for competing in the duct tape drags is the car has to be worth less than $5,000. Well I think we got that covered, but I don't want them to get the mistake of thinking that that engine is anything special, because it's not. So really we don't want it to look too good, you know. So we're just going to give this a quick rebuild. start by just pulling the carb off and there ain't nothing wrong with this double pumper. It's a 650 brawler double pumper. I just feel like that vacuum secondary is probably going to be a little more friendly on the highway. Get everything out of our way here. Oh good, that has pressure on it. Why? Definitely tell that this thing has seen some miles. Look at the front bowl on that thing. Just covered in road grime. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, I think I got all the bolts out of it. Pop her off now. Of course, I didn't drain the coolant, so we'll go ahead and create an environmental catastrophe. Yep. Oh, do I really got to pull a valve cover? No. I would very much like to not do that, please. Ah, uh, yeah, there we go. If you remember way back when I was putting this, you know, slamming that intake on there to drop it in this car, I used a Mountain Dew can to block off the heat riser. Well, it turns out you cannot use a Mountain Dew can to block off the heat riser. Who would have ever suspected that? I mean, uh, surely not... <laughs> uh, well, lesson learned there. Part of me would very much like to reuse these intake gaskets, but since I hit the big time, you know, I've really changed. I, I gotta say, I think I've sold out. I'm gonna put new $17 intake gaskets on it. I'm sorry. They're really prep this for install. The only place you got to put any RTV at on a Pontiac intake is maybe just a skin coat around the front water jackets. That's the only place coolant passes through, literally like a little on my finger, and then just kind of smear it around the edge of them. That's just in case there's some porous material or something around there from, you know, 60 years of use. Do the same thing on the intake side, then the rest of it goes on dry. Yeah, like say that's a first for me. I just opened up this Felpro package. One, two, and three gaskets in it. Got a spare. The only other thing I'd note is on the Pontiacs you got that bolt on the front that pulls the intake forward and it comes with a little rubber o-ring and I do coat that o-ring both sides of it with little RTV and I'm uh, usually not the guy that has the uh, valley pan full of antifreeze so hopefully it'll clear the valve covers. He sat right on there no problem. Looks nice and crappy which means it'll pass no issue. I was really hoping to have the original motor done for this but it's hung up in the machine shop, but the original numbers matching 400 is getting done right now. Get our intake bolts started. I guess we'll leave this chrome water neck on it and just assume whatever random thermostat's in it is fine. So on these, it's really important you get all the bolts started kind of loose, and maybe you get them down to where they're just barely not snug, and then you tighten up that front water pump bolt. I'll show you in a second, but it pulls the whole intake forward. So this is your bolt up here that pulls the whole intake forward and now I've got every bolt in kind of loose I'm going to tighten that down snug then tighten them all up and uh, rule of thumb anytime you're doing any kind of engine work if you have to torque something 
you don't need to like follow the torque specs and everything on a freaking intake manifold. But you do need to do it in the right sequence, and that's always going to be start in the middle and work your way out. It allows the, the, the piece to kind of float out, actually. All four middle ones, and I'm going to do it in a crisscross. Hey, the battery's still hooked up. Kind of like you would tighten down a wheel or something. And then I'm going to tighten them all down, and then I'm going to go over them one more time, because they'll inevitably back off a little bit as you torque them all. Now this thing is blow-by city, so I'm actually going to hook up the PCV valve since this carb has a front port for it. Other than that, i got to plug one vacuum line and I think we're done. Pick out the old carb here. This vacuum cap tore right off. It had a cut in it the whole time. Man, those things are just the worst. That's why I'll be going with shoving a couple of screws and some chunks of hose, then plugging what I need to plug with them. Ah, that's classy there. You do want the PCB hooked up sometimes because it actually puts a suction, puts a vacuum on the crankcase and will help your piston ring seal or theoretically, I don't know, keeps vapors out of the ozone. So this is a single plane intake and you can see it's basically just a gigantic hole. You know, this is like the bowl of the toilet and then the carburetor is like the toilet tank on top. and. Uh, you know, this is like an ultra flush, you know, I mean, that's like a flush, that's the one that feels like it's going to suck your insides out, you know. The dual plane is stepped one size lower than the other, and it's just more even fuel distribution. You get a lot more low mid-range power out of a dual plane than you would out of that, although for whatever reason, that thing ran spectacularly well on this, all things considered. All right, we're all buttoned up. Had to move the fuel line position, of course. I don't know, let's see if it runs. I think that RTV's had enough time. Took a minute for it to fill up. Still super rich. Choke to open up. Come on. I pulled the idle screws out to one and a half turns. It runs decent. Pretty rich though. It's just a 625. I don't know. I'm gonna throw a set of plugs in the goat real quick. Original AC Delco plugs, made in USA. $20 on eBay. Should be exactly what this guy needs. I don't think I ever even pulled a spark plug out of this. I'm pretty sure that motor just had the same spark plugs in it forever. Uh, these are the old green AC plugs. Good plugs. What better thing to set my plug gap with than this AC gap gauge? Huh? It only goes to 40, but yeah, 40 and a little wiggle will be 45 probably. There's nothing wrong with the plugs that were in this at all. They are also an R45S. It's funny, they actually are a little bit different design. Number four, number six, number eight. It's not bad. I just kind of drug it pulling it out. And that's one, three, five, and seven. Looks like this old wore out 400 is actually in remarkably good shape. We'll go ahead and drop the oil in this thing. We got only the finest oil to put in it. Now, I know there's not a lot of ZDP in these things, so I got two of them. Surely that's enough, right? Ah, yes. Only the best. And then a Wix filter. It's been so damn hot, this stuff is actually viscous. Look at that. That stuff's usually like goo. This stuff's getting crazy expensive these days, isn't it? How much are you paying for oil? Let me know down in the comments. I think I gave 21 bucks for this, or maybe 19. Let's see if she's a happy little poncho. <laughs> I forgot to mention that I did change out the thermostat housing and gasket. That seems to be fine now. And I went ahead and put a metal fuel filter on it because the drag strip is going to require that. And what we're going to be doing now is putting a new distributor in it. And uh, not just your front of the mill distributor. This is a Progression Ignition HEI. And these are super unique. So you install these things at 10 degrees advance and then you can control the timing from an app on your phone. You can also lock the car out so it won't start 
Uh, you can set rev limiters and all kinds of stuff. And it's all right here. No ignition box. And it looks like a stock HEI. Or they even have a small cap distributor. And they're about $569 for that. Sounds like a lot, right? But, I mean, if you price an MSD box and something that has all those features, plus a distributor, you're looking at more than that. Plus, I can control it with my freaking phone, man. I've always wanted to play with one, so that's what we're going to be doing right now. However, we have one little hang-up with that. If I recall correctly, the balancer on this engine is slipped, and you have to install this at 10 degrees before top dead center. We can try it and see if it looks like it's correct. I bought a piston stop just to make sure of that, uh, and then I bought some timing tape too, just in case. I don't know if I'm actually going to use that or not, but or maybe it only slips while it's running. I uh, who knows. First thing I'm going to do here is just pop the distributor cap off here. Let's just see if this balancer is really that far off. So number one points right here. If you look down here, here's the timing marks on your Pontiac. I'm just going to rotate it. Here's the mark right here on the balancer. This shows us where the crankshaft position is. So if I rotate that to zero, it should be top dead center. That's pointing right where number one was. So that's, well, I mean, that's pretty dang good. If we put the piston stop in, I'll back the engine back off the top dead center. So I'm just going to thread this stop into the hole here. I'm just going to roll it until the engine stops. Yep, that stopped it. See the balancer mark there? See how it's just a little bit off? That's probably due to the Chinese piston stop more than anything, but that does tell us that Zero is zero, and we don't need to mess with, well, anything. Well, let's go ahead and pop out the old distributor. Ah. Here we go. Oldie but a goodie. I've had that one for a long time. Remove cap. Done. Coat distributor gear and O-rings with engine oil or assembly lube. Sure. Install distributor into engine with rotor pointing in the general direction of where the number one spark plug wire will be. Okay. No vacuum advance can to worry about on this one, so that's kind of nice. I put it where it was. I guess it dropped right in. Next step changes things up a little bit. You see these black marks on top of the housing here? It wants you to rotate the distributor housing around until one of these marks is aligned with the rotor, and that's going to make it 10 degrees. Now, it wants it perfectly aligned with the rotor, which I don't really know how you can do that, but I just kind of held my Sharpie up like this and it looks like it lines up and then I made a mark on the outside of the distributor housing so that this is now number one. You do actually have to hook up a vacuum signal to this thing and then once it hooked up to a full manifold vacuum source I just happen to have this intake port right there that'll make a, a pretty good vacuum source for it. This is like the curliest piece of hose I swear. I hooked it all up it's uh, as simple as any other HEI. Uh, switch 12 volts. I, I guess we start it now? Start engine. Delivered pre-programmed with a timing table that is fixed at 10 degrees before top dead center. Connect timing line. Fire it up and try to get this thing set on 10 degrees. I went ahead and stuck some timing tape to the balancer. Not that that's going to do any good. I'm pretty sure it's on 10 right now. Hopefully I'm right. But it needs to be 10 at 1200 RPM, leaving the vacuum hooked up. I'm going to turn up the idle screw so it sits at 1200 RPM, so it's very consistent. Gotta be pretty close! Tighten distributor hold down all the way, now I think everything else is done off the app. Turn the key on to power the distributor. So I'm connected to the distributor. We're going to generate a table, and you get to just make your own distributor curve here I guess. Idle speed probably about 650. Idle timing so at idle I'd probably want well I don't know probably S16 is probably fine. Max RPM base so that's basically the centrifugal advance in a normal one. Now this is a pretty low compression engine. I'm gonna go with let's go 38 at first and I want all in by probably a little sooner than that. Maybe 2750. Rev limiter 5000 that's pretty good. Let's generate table. 
Here's the table. On the left is manifold absolute pressure, uh, which is why you had to hook up a vacuum source. And on the bottom is RPM. So as manifold absolute pressure increases, then more RPM. Uh, so that, that top one's like wide open all the way 38 degrees. Select these, you can change them around, you can change each individual number, or you can turn like that whole rectangle, I can change that whole square, you know. It's pretty cool. We're gonna save. We're gonna name it. I'll do 16I38T5000 because 16 initial, 38 total, 5000 RPM rev limiter. It has this gauges screen which we should be able to actually see the timing. That's a good response. I think I need to go play with that curb idle after messing with it. It's sitting up too high. So obviously, I'm going to have to play with this thing quite a bit by just driving it around and tinkering. But I can already tell it runs better. I like that. I'm probably going to buy them for everything I own. I'm putting some new tires on the GOAT. So I got these tires out of the chunk yard whenever I first built the car, and then I aligned the front end with a bubble level in my eyeballs. Boy, that's a pretty good wear pattern after 5,000 miles. Uh, clearly this thing's not in that bad a shape. I thought it would have been worse. It still has its original ball joints and original bushings in it. I'm just going to take a peek at the bushings, see if that's something I even need to bother with. And I can see some cracking and Stuff like that, but I don't really see anything that looks like they've been walking around. The ball joint boots are in good shape still. They've still got grease in them. I mean, they're tight. I think I'm going to leave it alone and keep running these original ball joints. They're probably better than the Chinese ones I got for it. But everything feels great up here. And it should. This car drives wonderful. Now, I just wanted to make sure that it would be okay for a high-speed pass down a quarter-mile strip. This thing will hit, probably hit 90 miles an hour, 95 by the end of the strip, and you know, I didn't want it to be too sketch. But, so I'm going to mount those tires. I picked up those Mastercraft 235-60-15s to replace these 205-65-15s. Those are going to have a little bit more of a footprint than these. That should also help the car drive better, plus we'll have a matching set of raised letter tires. And by that I mean they're not really matching because the rears are a different brand. But, you know, close enough. That looks a lot better. It'd be good to have white letters all the way around for the first time and ever. Uh, yeah. Back out here tonight. Now I think I'm going to try to put wipers in the goat. Not that our manual wipers here, wipers by hand here, you know, not that they're not great, but, well, they don't work, work really good if, if there's only one of you. Well, first things first, I had to change out this wiper arm. Well, actually, I didn't have to, but I thought I did because I was going to try to hook up the, you know, hidden wiper thing. But uh, the pin's actually broken on the wiper transmission, so I just zip-tied it. Uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's never going to work at all. Also, I need to remove about 47 self-tappers to pull that block-off plate off. Here, I just added a couple more zip-ties, you know, and you can tell that that's articulated at the perfect angle. Well, it should at least allow us to have wipers. Now it's going to pain me to do this, but these self-tappers have got to go. And here's my wiper motor and the brand new wiper arm thing. Uh, I did, you know, just notice something uh, a little concerning. Uh, I don't have a cover for this because, well, I don't have a wiper motor. So we'll throw it on there for now, but uh, I'm going to have to get one of those on order, I guess. Yeah, we're going to have a few things that we got to get around here. Another one is that I don't have any of the hardware to attach this wiper motor to the firewall and uh, it, they are kind of a unique bolt. On your bolt nut restoration you really got to have right, you know, so we're going to shoot self-tappers into it. I'm going to bust out my industrial grade self-tappers for this job. Have you ever seen anybody self-tapping screw a wiper motor to their firewall? Probably not, so you know. If you haven't subscribed by now, maybe you ought to. Or maybe you should unsubscribe. I don't know. Ah, yeah. That's not going anywhere for at least a short while. We'll just tear that off. 
Who needs that dust cover anyway? This way, that gear mechanism is air cooled. Uh, it'll last probably 10 times as long now. Trim the excess off, I believe, just to be on the safe side, you know, safety. Weirdly, and then I, I, I do mean weirdly, nothing lines up. I mean, who would have ever saw that one coming? I know I did. Well, it's only like an inch off. I know the motor's actually not an inch off. Self-tappers or not, I shot them through the factory holes. I came over here and looked at my Le Mans, wondering if there was some sort of difference, and lo and behold, there's some sort of difference. If I put that on flat like that, you can see how much further out it kicks that pivot, and it's actually shorter. Definitely bent differently. JD just had to make a slight adjustment to the wiper around there to make it fit now everything just lines up beautifully i mean that's clearly i mean that'll wipe off your upper cowl you know you don't have water on there so yeah no this is all going to work fine totally fine let's go ahead and wire this thing up and see if it actually does anything i got it everything hooked up up there i don't think it's right or even close to correct but you know who cares if you'll take a trip with me into the way back machine you'll remember me tucking up all this extra wiring that was in the wiring harness up under the dash instead of simply removing it. Now you get to see why. Because when you need to add a circuit, it's all right here. Makes it a lot easier when I can just reach inside this vent. Hmm, let me pick one. Now what do any of them do? <laughs> we'll take the heater one. That's probably got power on it. And the beauty of the goat is that I can just reach my hands through the extra cluster and <laughs> find and route it really easy. The GOAT is, is a really user-friendly vehicle. We'll just hook it up to this probably way undersized toggle switch I found in my cabinet. Well, this thing's a real gem, let me tell you. Working just like it should. I don't really know what the deal is here, but I think we'll just rain exit. Something must have been in a bind and immediately broke something in there. Well, since I screwed up the windshield wiper motor, let's see if I can screw up the windows too. So I got some polycarbonate sheeting here, and it's not plexiglass, it's polycarbonate. It's like Lexon, it doesn't break off into chunks. Acrylic is the one that's dangerous. This is legal for racing, probably. All I'm going to try to do is cut a window shaped piece of polycarbonate and just let it slide up and down in the window. It's pretty crude, but it doesn't need to be anything fancy. I'm just going to take a measurement from where the original window is. It doesn't have to be perfect. It's just got to be something so that I can go down the track. So I just need basically the length of the door panel, not even the whole door, because, well, the door overlaps the quarter by like four inches. That's kind of one of the problems with this car. I don't know if you noticed it, but it's, well, it's kind of rough. 36 on the nose. All right. So I think the smart thing to do would be to start at 36. We'll cut a square, and then we'll get our angles off of that. But it'll be a smaller piece of polycarbonate for me to work by myself with. So we actually need our window to be about 15 and 3 quarter. But we need to put it down in the door a few inches. Actually, this whole thing's only 24. Maybe this will work. I don't know how much room there is for it to slide down in there without sticking up. But I, I kind of wonder if we need to put a curve into this or not. Uh, I don't know if you can do that with a heat gun with this kind of stuff. I mean, we, we got some learning to do here. The forbidden knife. The hot knife. Will a hot knife cut polycarbonate? Let's find out together. Claims to be on the highest setting. It's been like five minutes, so I don't know. I thought it would be a good idea, okay guys? All right, I went out on a limb. I was kind of hoping this would be like a hot knife through butter, but uh, I think it's more like a, a warm knife through cement. How you would typically do this is just score it a whole bunch and then snap it. But I was hoping to have an easier workaround than that. And as is tradition, I was completely incorrect. It turns out that buying the cheapest hot knife you can find on Amazon and then trying to actually use it doesn't work. Who would have thought? Well, I am all about the shortcut, so let's try this. There you go, there's my window. Legal polycarbonate, that's that's gonna be the thing that makes or breaks it, you know. That's why arbitrary rules in racing are killing racing. Just just saying. How far down will you go in there? Alright, well that's some progress anyway. Uh well actually I'm pretty happy with that. 
Uh, I'm just going to crawl in on the other side there and mark the angle of what's left of that A pillar. Well, that perfectly straight line is basically the A pillar of the car. Yeah, I think it's uh, pretty much a dead match for it, really. That fits pretty good. Pretty good, other than all the gaps, but I think it's good enough to get a tech guy to say okay. Uh, after all, that's really all we need. Even this random piece of trim here will actually hold the front of the window in and won't let it blow out. So that's pretty good. I like it. Now we just need a way to hold it up. I'm pretty sure this hole right here, drilled straight through, would be a great spot to put a pin. The bullet didn't make it all the way through, so let's finish the job. Well, that kind of works. Just shoving a bolt in here. Need to go a little higher with it, I think. But uh, also, the kind of lends the issue uh, I open the door on the outside. I need to be able to let the window down on the inside, you know. Or the goat quickly becomes my coffin, which can get real. It's my coffin already. Back on the goat, I think I got a plan for how to attach this. The bolt in the window doesn't seem to work very good. So, we'll use a bungee cord, right? They want me to have windows? Well, I'm gonna have windows. See, we got all these holes in the roof that are real handy. And I'm thinking, if we just bolt this bungee cord to the top of the window, well, that'll surely just hold her right in place. And then I can easily unlatch it from inside the car. Safety, right? That's what it's all about, safety, so we'll be safe. Oh, we could go straight to the... We don't even have to go on the outside of the car. We can keep things classy and go to that inner roof support. I think I'll just drill a hole somewhere right in there. Oh, that's gonna work. Yeah. I marked it there. Marked it on the bungee cord. Let's see what happens. So I got that on there. And it works. The only downside is it's really hard to put down in the door. It'll definitely hold the window in place. Got the carriage bolt on the inside. You know, it's rounded for safety. I think I gotta cut what's left of this window regulator out of here. That's what's getting in our way. Unbolting the regulator. And that's the first actual bullet I've found in this car. <laughs> wow. That's the first one. You'd think I'd have found more, but not till now. That's a keeper there. Well, this is ready to come out. Any structure the door had is now gone, but, you know, we're doing this for safety. Easy access to get that regulator out. Oh, yeah, now it's... That's even worse. Nope. Oh, that'll work. It... <laughs> It will appear to be a window. That's what we need. Actually works pretty well now. And they come right out so we can store them separately. That's what you want out of your windows for safety, is for them to just eject. All right, well anyway, I'm gonna make the dangerous assumption that that side is similar to this side. And then we'll go ahead and, and I'm just gonna make two of these. And we'll worry about the quarter glasses later or maybe I can get to them, we'll see. This side goes much better. It just slides right down in there. I think we think we got the hard one out of the way first, anyway. And there's the shape I got for the quarter window. I guess we'll see if that works. Yeah, there's that one. You know, my measurements were slightly off, but that was all on purpose. You see, see, this is a uh, this is a pop in window now, since it won't actually go down for some reason. And I'm not tearing into this quarter to figure out why. Um, you know, it's now, it just snaps in, just like that. Oh, wait, oh, see? <laughs> I knew what I was doing. Yes, all along I knew what I was doing. Hmm, isn't that brilliant? Almost passable if it had the, if it had the weather strip on it. Paired with this, huh, huh? There's just a slight gap. Um, that's for air uh, ventilation, yes. This is all for safety, so I can still unlatch the door. That's what I'm going to tell the guy when he texts it. Now, for those of you that are lacking a sense of humor, this is clearly something I really don't care about. Windows are not going to save me in this. Okay, nothing will. Well, the goat has windows. Now, you can tell which one I made first, of course, because the passenger side actually looks decent. Uh, you know, for what it is. It's, it's not hooked because I can't get into the car if I do that, but well, there's always the back window, I guess. This is the escape hatch tech guy. Uh, you see, yep, that's what it's for. Yeah, I wouldn't ever put a window back there because of that, but uh, no, this side's better, actually. Put a little more thought into how I made the quarter glass and extended it and 
Uh, that's how I should have done that side. I may remake it even. Now, one last thing I want to do to the goat before we take off for Arizona, and that's we got to change these seats out. They they're just so wore out and stuff. My back can't take it. Uh, you know, you might expect to see some Recaro buckets or something, and no. I painted a guy's truck and uh, traded him the paintwork for those two bucket seats over there. That seemed like a fair deal. He threw in a case of beer. So uh, we'll put those in here. I always thought they were too nice to put in here, but now we have windows so we can kind of protect them, right? So I'm going to take these out. So those do need tracks, but hopefully we can make these tracks work. If not, I have those seats up there. Those are out of the Firebird, and uh, those tracks should work on those seats over there. 15 inches. You're close. Well, they wouldn't work, so I guess I'm gonna yank these off. We're definitely gonna have to drill some holes in the floor. Get the tracks swapped over. Those tracks off of those Firebird seats fit pretty good. Let's see. They fit. Yeah, it looks a lot better. It just about goes right in the factory A body seat. The Holy Goat, of course, is a real GTO, so it had buckets from the factory. Needs yeah. to move over a little bit. I just drill it down the track, and then it'll line up with these two outer holes here. And it needs to come this way a little bit. So yeah, I think I'll just drill another hole right next to that one, and then we'll see how it fits. That'll get the back bolted in. The front is still a ways off from here to here. Maybe if it shifts over, it'll make it. Had to hog that out a bit, but it looks right in there, doesn't it? Yeah, is it, it looks straight. Straight. And... All right. Well, we got the back ones bolted in. I'm gonna try to slide the seat back, and then maybe we could just drill the fronts. A little bit easier that way. Almost too bad, actually. I'm not gonna drill this one because it'll bolt to that stud. Well, it would bolt to that stud if. Uh, if there was any of that stud left. Ah, right into the damn body support. Damn floors in this thing are just too good, actually. Mm -hmm. I can't get a nut to start on this, so I'm gonna put a washer on it, and then I'm gonna take these vice grips you see. Actually, you know what? We don't even need the wash. So I'm just going to take these vice grips like this. See this, G? It's yep. a, kind of a, it's a life hack. See that? And we're done. That's installed now. Time for my seat. Now, I'm to slide this other track. Ah. Back one, then. Ah, yes. Well, it's not quite the same, is it? Yeah, JD got the front of this thing bolted down. Well, we could just bridge that with a washer. Now, look at that. Let's put a washer on there and it'll sandwich it. Yeah, you're right, there ain't enough left of that one, but it almost lines up with that hole we already drilled. I don't know why this side fits pretty decently. This is a piece that broke off of the old seats that were in it. This thing always had like two at best holding it in. Well, that'll be NHRA tech approved because, well, you know what? The car's got glass. There we go. Nice and sideways, just how I like it. Let me test it out now. Let's, let's you hop in that one. Cozy. Much more comfy. I have accidentally put it to where I need it all the way back to drive, but uh, oh, ooh, headrest. Oh, this is a driving machine now. Hell yeah, man. This is actually way more comfortable, isn't it? Yes. That's it's gonna make our life a lot better. We may want to put a cover on them because they're black in the desert sun. That's not gonna be very pleasant. Is it? Oh, all in all, I'm pretty happy with this. Well, with that, I think we're done with the Holy Goat for now. We made some pretty good improvements here. It's a little more drivable. It's got theft proofing thanks to that progression ignition distributor. 
uh, it's going to be great. No, not really, but it'll be a little bit more comfortable than before. So if you want to see me and JD and Buff and all my friends and Cody, we're all going down to the Duct Tape Drags of Tucson, Arizona, September 29th and 30th of 2023. Now, if you want to see us there, come be there. I'm giving away shirts and stuff like that, just giving them away. I mean, other people sell them, I'll just give them away. I think the Holy Goat will make it, don't you? Yo, yeah. Yeah. Definitely. I think we're done. Yep. I mean, that, I think this, well, okay. I think this is as good as it gets, anyway. Anyway, we'll see you guys next time on Pole Barn Garage. Uh, I don't even know where this video is going to land, but you're going to be seeing some more of the boogie van soon. You're going to be seeing me and Kevin up in Minnesota. We actually just got back from there today uh, to break up the, to destroy all the continuity of my videos. That's what we did all weekend. We'll see you next time. Like, subscribe, please do that. That really helps a lot. There's like 40% of people aren't subscribed. If I get you guys to just click that button, it's free. It doesn't. It don't cost you nothing. Uh, it makes a big difference. So uh, we'll see you guys next time.